Okay, let's do a demonstration of uh, slowly changing dimensions. We're going to load type 0, 1, 2, and 3. I'm using a uh, standard product table. Let's just take a look at uh, that product table. So it's, it's pretty standard. Um, we've got a, a surrogate key. We have a business key, or you might call that a natural key. Um, we have some, some just standard data. Uh, we have an is active date, which allows us to do ghost deletes, meaning if a product uh, is no longer offered, we don't delete the product. We just mark it as inactive. And that way we won't be worrying about deletes when we do the slow, slowly changing, when we load the slowly changing dimension. And the other thing that's important about this, the design of this table that influences our slowly changing dimension design is the fact that we have this modified date. And this modified date is maintained by a trigger. So we have this trigger here. And it's a after update trigger. And if any updates are done to any row in this table, it will run this code right here, which will set the modified date to the current system date time. So that gives us the ability uh, so whether somebody comes in and manually changes this data or, uh, or code changes this data, uh, this will be maintained. So we'll be able to use this to tell if a row has changed. And that's very important, of course, for slowly changing dimension. All right. Uh, I have a separate table, destination table, in a uh, separate data, database marked data warehouse for uh, each of the different types. And again, that's the, the dim product we're doing. Okay, so let's go into here, and for our first uh, slowly changing dimension, um, our first task is a script task, and what that's going to do is drop the column store index on the table, because the column store index is, of course, the best index to use in a data warehouse, but column store index does not allow writes, so we can't load it until we drop that index. So it's it's pretty simple. Uh, we just need to have our connection to the data warehouse. Um, and that's true. We, uh, let me go over that and after this. We'll talk about the connections. That's really the first step. And here's the code where we're just going to check to see if the index is there. And if the index is there, then we're going to drop the index. Okay, so that's very simple. Uh, scripting uh, SQL task there. Um, now the first thing you want to do when you create your pa your package is to create your um, your connection manager. So you just come up here to connection managers and say new connection manager and that way they will be global to the project and all of your packages can use those uh, connection managers which we'll be using over and over again. So here's our um, our staging table is in this database and our for um, destination tables, the uh, the dimension tables are in this data warehouse uh, database. Okay, so we have our connections to the database, um, and we're going to be dropping the indexes, and then we add the indexes back. Okay, so now we'll go into the data flow. Now this data flow could have been done again with scripting. But uh, this is an integration services exercise, so we're going to try and use uh, integration services. Uh, we could have also used the uh, slowly changing dimension uh, scripting component, um, but that that wouldn't be much of an exercise because it's it's basically just a wizard, and it then plops all the components out for you. Um, so that wouldn't be too interesting. Also, the uh, the, that slowly changing dimension component slash wizard doesn't do type 3. So we would be on our own for type 3. Uh, and type 3 is very similar to type 2, so we, we might as well do these by hand. Plus uh, 0 and 1 are uh, very similar to each other and fairly straightforward to do. Um, okay, so first we um, need to have a, an OLEDB uh, source, so and we'll select that connection manager to the source and select our product table, and of course all of our columns. And then we need to hook that up to a, um, a lookup transformation. Um, the 
transformation, the de it defaults to uh, full cache, and full cache is fine. Um, the caching is very important. You um, you want to usually use full cache unless the lookup table, which is our destination table, we're looking up, we're looking to see if the incoming rows are inside of our destination table. So if our destination table, our dimension product, is very very large, then we we would have to design the caching scheme here. We would have to maybe go down to a partial cache or even a no cache. Um, depending on how big that dimension table is. It's also how many times are you actually looking it up. If only if very few rows are coming in, um, then caching is really not that important. Um, but if you have a lot of rows coming in, then caching is could be very important. Um, you also, it, this um, how to handle the rows that don't match, this defaults to, a, um, to fail component, which is pretty bad. So you want to make sure that you uh, redirect rows to the no match output so that we can handle the matching versus the not matching rows. That's uh, very, very important to what we're doing. Um, now, and then you want to make sure you're connecting to that uh, dimension. And here we're, we're basically saying, what are we matching on, which is the incoming product ID to the uh, product ID that we have stored in the data warehouse and of course we're creating the, the only new column here in our dimension table we're basically loading everything from production except we're also creating a new surrogate key in the data warehouse um, that's standard practice if you uh, look at the Kimball method uh, they he always recommends that you use a, a surrogate key in your data warehouse that's mostly in case you want to start doing uh, historical records. You'll need that um, that that uh, that uh, sur surrogate key in your data warehouse. Um, that's really all we have to do for that. Now that where we get a match, that means the data is already there, and since this is type zero, uh, we don't care about data that's already loaded. We're rejecting any matches. We're rejecting any changes to the data. So we want to just do nothing. Um, we don't need this. We, I could delete this, and this would run just fine. The, it would still do nothing with the data that matches. I just put this here um, as an annotation. Now, we could have actually used an annotation. Um, there is the ability to add annotations. But I think this makes it very easy to see that we're not doing anything with the matches. Um, because we don't, because we're because type zero rejects uh, any changes. So what we but what we do care about is new rows, which would be the no no matching. So if we didn't find the business, the if we didn't find the surrogate key, then that means we don't already have that product. So we want to load the new product. So this is just a data destination, very straightforward. So we connect to the data warehouse. We connect to the appropriate dimension table. Uh, we make sure that our mappings that we're mapping everything. Um, here and we of course don't want to put anything in our uh, surrogate key for the data warehouse because that's an auto number field so that'll be auto numbered for us everything else gets loaded so very straightforward very pretty trivial although this is a good example of basically doing an upsert you're handling um, existing records which would get a an update they were you'd put an update here and you're handling non-existing records which would get an insert so you're handling those two separately um, of course you could just use a scripting task and do a t-sql merge but um, that would be more of a t-sql solution than an integration services solution we're looking at integration services today okay so that's pretty much it for um, for the type zero so we can come back to the control flow um, and we can look at what we're doing differently for um, for the type one. Now the type one is basically identical to type zero except we do care about updating the table. So let's, let's go back to the table for a second. So that means if any of these data points here change in a type zero, we'll reject those changes. They won't be reflected. But in a type one, we do want to override the old values with the new values. So we won't be keeping any historical records of any changes. We'll just be overriding. Um, let's see. So let's go into here. And we can see that all we really had to do was change this to an update. Uh, the rest of this stayed exactly the same 
as, as type 0. So all we had to do is, in, instead of doing nothing here to the matches, we are doing an update. And to do an update in integration services, you need to use an OLEDB command. Um, and I'm using OLEDB for all of my connections, so I'm using an OLEDB command. Uh, OLEDB, uh, if you read Microsoft's literature, it sounds like OLEDB is about to be phased out, or it should have been phased out years and years ago, and then it's very old. But if you kind of read the tea leaves, if you read the, read the writing on the wall by looking at all of Microsoft's books online, look at the new products coming out, um, Microsoft continues to favor OLEDB over all other connection types. Um, it has more functionality than any of the other connection types. It has um, very good speed. It has bulk lo loading um, capabilities, lots of features, lots of bells and whistles. So I think Microsoft is going to continue to um, support OLEDB into the future. At least for now, it, it seems to be the standard, uh, the best practice. So use OLEDB. So here's our command. Anyway, that kind of got a little long, sorry. Um, Let's go in here. So you're, what you want to do is you want to um, select your connection manager to your data warehouse, and you can hit refresh. As long as you don't, as long as you don't get an error message down here, then that means you're, you, that worked fine. And then you need to um, come in here, and this is where you actually put your SQL command. And this is our update statement. And so we want to update all of the data rows, um, and with the incoming data and what we do is we put a question mark as a placeholder for the incoming data and then we have to set that in this column of in this um, tab here for column mappings and we have a where clause and even that gets a uh, question mark for the incoming data placeholder so here's that now one thing that's important to note is the order that these appear here is the same order uh, that we'll get over here. Otherwise, very would would be almost impossible to do this. So we have to keep in we have to keep in mind what the order is here when we come in here to do the column mappings because we don't get a lot of help. Uh, we just get these param names and these param names here. This is these are the question marks. So. Um, so we want to match, so we can see name, product number, color. We can see those match up. This is the same order as, as this. We can see that, and, and so they just line right up, except, of course, for the product ID, which was that very last question mark. That was our where clause. So that one needs to be brought all the way down to param 9. That's our last question mark. Okay, and again, if you once you get all this lined up, if you hit refresh, um, the fact that you didn't get an error message shows that that, that looks good. Um, and then you're pretty much done. That's pretty much all you have to do to do an insert. And again, this is a good example of how to do an upsert, uh, although we're not handling deletes in this particular case, and that's because, of course, we have that is active column in the database, which is handling our deletes. Okay. Um, that's gone on long enough. I'm going to handle the um, next two uh, in the next video. Okay, see you then.